Welcome to the West End Kanapali Ocean Resort and Villas. Today we're going to make uh, sweet potato gnocchi. We'll start off with uh, the Molokai sweet potatoes. The first step is to boil these guys with the skin on. This way it keeps the color intact. We don't bleed it out. The biggest thing about making gnocchi is that you don't overwork it. If you overwork it and you make too much gluten, then they become dense and chewy, pasty on your mouth. So I take my eggs, mix them with three quarters of a cup finely grated Parmesan, half a thing of nutmeg. If you're making it with your kids, this is a great job for them. About two tablespoons of salt. Remember that you're adding potatoes. Potatoes are gonna suck up a lot of that salt. So I'll take all of this, whip it all together, make it a full mix. So to this mixture, I add my sweet potatoes. I take this and I fold in the eggs so that now I can get this all incorporated homogenous before I add the flour. So I'm not actually working the flour in. As soon as you add the flour, you start to create gluten. So here we go. Mashed eggs, cheese mixture. So this is the key to the whole process, is the combination of the potato and the flour going together. This is where it can all go wrong, or it all, it all makes love. So I add about half of the flour into there, and I poke holes in it. So I, it'll absorb the flour without me actually working it. Now, I fold it together and we'll make this, it'll start to come together as a dough. My son loves this part of making pasta or gnocchi. He's uh, been making dough since he was like three years old. This is all to feel. Someone would like me to tell him exactly when it's done. You just gotta pay attention. So now we have a pretty big mass of potatoes. We'll fold it over, and you don't see me overly beating it. We're just gonna get it all incorporated. These potatoes are from Molokai L&R Farms. We work with them, they grow only sweet potatoes, third generation family in Molokai. So, if you get in here, you can see that they're still pretty moist. My finger's sticking to it. Don't want that, so we'll just toss a little bit more flour on there. I'll take the whole thing, incorporate it, because on the inside, there's moisture. On the outside, it's absorbing it. You can already see the difference in the dough texture from that add-on. So here we go. Now look at the dough here. The gnocchi dough should be all together, but have no bounce. That way we haven't created too much gluten. The more bounce you have, the more gluten you get. And this little bit of flour that you see on the outside will be absorbed. Now you want to set this aside for 30 minutes, let it rest, we'll be ready to go. Now, our dough is rested, which means all the gluten is calmed down and we can work with it. Here we go. I cut off little sections. So what we're going to make is we're going to make a long strand. You start in the middle when you roll it out and you work your way out full fingered. You can see my cylinder right there. And you notice I didn't put any flour down. If you put any flour down, it'll start to slide, cannot roll. It has just enough wetness in it to stick and roll. I'm also not leaving any residue on the table. The whole point is that when you bite into this, it's airy. So there you see a perfectly pretty well even cylinder laid out, ready to go. I chop off the ugly end. One of the other things to look at here, you see that everything's together. There's no clumps. No clumps of cheese, no clumps of potatoes, flour, looks moist, all homogenous. That's important. Now, I put my two fingers, my thumb and my index finger together, make little cuts so it make little pillows just like that. All right, so now we're ready. We got our gnocchi rolled out. Our water is boiling. Oh, we got a hot pan with butter in it for when they come out. This process is pretty quick. Under three minutes to cook the gnocchi. Um, rule of thumb is when your gnocchi float, 
they're done. We don't want to overcrowd our baskets, so I'll probably put like 10 in each basket. Little pillows. There we go. If you're doing it in a pot without baskets, give it a light stir so they don't stick on the bottom and then they'll never float. You want to make sure that they got freedom to fly. Now you're starting to have floaters, but that doesn't mean that the whole dish is ready. There's a little bit of rawness. They're like medium rare, like your steak right now. Little clouds floating to the top. Now just about everybody's up there, I would give it 30 seconds. 